Coming Home, written by Ink in My Heart and on the Page, and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Chapter 9, Part 9. Oh, good, you're awake. Tony jumped, spinning around and hand coming up to defend himself. He blinked, released a harsh breath, and glared at Natasha, who had folded herself up onto the kitchen bench. He dropped his hand and turned to continue making his coffee, willing his heartbeat to calm down. How the hell did you even get onto this floor? Tony grumbled. I have my ways, Natasha said evasively. Why are you here? Tony asked, pouring the coffee all the way to the brim of the mug. He lifted it carefully and took a sip, grunting as it gave him the kick he needed to wake up. You have the press conference today, Natasha said. Just offering my services to you, if you need them. You plan on taking out the reporters? Tony quirked a brow upwards. You may be out of luck. I think Pepper got to them first. Natasha smirked. She can't have all the fun. Tony shook his head and took another sip of coffee. You're welcome to tag along. And folding herself from the kitchen bench, Natasha landed lightly on the ground. I think I will. Peter would love it, Tony smirked, half hidden behind his coffee mug. Aunt Natasha as his personal bodyguard. Aunt Natasha, she murmured. Louder, she said. I'll be there. And then she left via the elevator, leaving Tony staring fondly after her. Pepper was already dousing fires in her office, getting ready for the press conference that she had organised to have at eleven. She had left with strict instructions to make sure that Peter ate a decent breakfast and that he be dressed and ready to go. He started on the first half of the instructions, and had half made pancake batter when he saw Peter peeking his head around the corner. Pete? Tony smiled, amused. Aunt May isn't up yet. Peter shuffled out from his hiding space, still checking his surroundings before he relaxed into a stall at the kitchen bench. Just checking... Tony didn't blame the kid. When May had arrived at the tower, looking frazzled and annoyed, she'd immediately asked for Peter. "'Where is Peter?' May had frowned. "'I thought the school signed an NDA.' "'They did,' Pepper had growled. "'The secretary ignored it and caused this entire thing to blow up in our faces.' "'Peter is in his room, resting. He had a sensory overload,' Tony had explained, watching May's reaction carefully. "'Sensory overload?' May repeated, eyes squinting behind her glasses. "'What caused that?' I don't know, Tony asked. Ned said Peter's had some sensory overload since Ben died. May sighed and had fallen into the nearest chair. Oh, Peter. He never said anything. Seems like him and Ned have been trying to deal with it on their own, Tony said. By the sounds of it, loud noises and lights can trigger it. May had taken off her glasses and rubbed at her eyes. Why didn't he just tell me? We will be having a talk when he feels better, Peppa had said. Good. May slipped her glasses back on. I'd like to be there, if that's okay. Thought you might, Tony smirked. Tony finished making the batter and started pouring it into the pan, the batter hissing as it touched the heat. How are you feeling this morning? Starving, Peter moaned, slipping out of his stool and shuffling by Tony's side. He sniffed the air, licked his lips. Are those? They're for you, Tony laughed. Back, go on, shoo, they're not ready yet. Peter pouted and made a wounded noise, but shuffled to the fridge to get some juice. Other than hungry, how's your head? Any pain? Tony asked. None, Peter said, grabbing a glass from the cabinet. Good, Tony nodded. How come you didn't tell us about this? Or even May? He glanced over his shoulder to watch Peter. I didn't want May to worry, Peter shrugged, filling up the glass before twisting the cap back on the bottle. He had just lost Ben. I didn't want to add to her stress. Tony flipped the pancake over and turned to face Peter. Kid, this is something that May would have wanted to know about. It's something me and your mum want to know about. He shook his head, trying to banish the image of seeing Peter so sick. It had taken him a long time to fall asleep last night. We thought that something was seriously wrong. We already lost you once. We don't want to do it again. Peter ducked his head. I'm sorry. Tony moved to Peter, pulling him into a hug. He kissed the top of Peter's head when he felt his son's arms wrap around him. You can tell us anything. I mean it, Tony said firmly. You can come to us for anything. We want you to. We love you so much, Peter. I love you too, Peter whispered against Tony's chest. Tony kissed Peter's head again, squeezing him tighter. Hey, Dad? Peter asked. Tony's heart stuttered, warmth filling his chest. Yeah? The pancakes are burning? Shit. Tony pushed Peter away and hurried to the pan to flip the pancake over. One side was perfectly brown, while the other was looking a little charred. Tony felt Peter come up behind him and peer over his shoulder. Can I still eat that? I wasn't kidding about being starving.
Peter could hear the chatter of what seemed like a thousand reporters behind the thick wooden oak doors that separated him from them. He tugged nervously at the jacket he wore, and looked longingly at the elevator that would take him back up to the apartment. He would rather be back up there, listening to May chew him out about keeping his medical problems to himself. You're going to do great, Peter, Pepper soothed. It'll be over before you know it. What if I screw it up? Peter asked, eyes widening as a slow horror crept up his throat. What if I just make it worse? What if I say something stupid? Whoa, 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 Tony interrupted his babble. Breathe, kiddo. You're not going to say anything stupid, I promise. What if they ask me a question I can't answer? Peter whined. They're not going to, Pepper said. We are going to give a statement and not taking questions. All you have to do is stand there with us, okay? Peter nodded. Right, just stand there. I can do that. You can't do anything worse than what your father has, Pepper winked. I'd be offended, but she's right. Tony gave a harsh shrug and a little smile. Your mum has gotten me through some tough PR nightmares. This is nothing compared to them. Like when you said you were Iron Man, Peter perked up a little. Tony winced. Exactly like that. All you had to do was stick to the cue cards, Pepper muttered, but she was smiling. But look how well it turned out, Tony cried. Pepper shook her head fondly as Natasha slipped out of the big wooden oak doors. Are you ready? Tony and Pepper looked at Peter. Not trusting his voice, Peter took a deep breath and nodded. Just remember, Tony said, throwing an arm around his shoulders. The cameras are going to start flashing when we step inside. Just keep your head down, okay? And take your time. I got it, Peter said. I'm prepared this time. You'll do great, Peter, Natasha smiled at him. Feeling bold, Peter grinned, and the door was pushed open. Tony had been right, and the second the door had opened, camera flashes started going off. Peter was much better prepared for them this time, and as the chatter grew louder, he was able to block most of it out. Tony kept a firm arm around him as they stepped up to the small podium. Peter blinked at the reporters. He couldn't believe that they were there for him. "'Thank you, everyone,' Pepper said, standing tall and her voice ringing out over the room. "'You are aware of what this press conference is about. Due to yesterday's complete lack of decorum and respect, when the news broke that our son Peter had been returned home, and you chased four teenagers down the street for an interview. Peter shrunk into Tony at Pepper's scolding, and he could see several people shift guiltily. Peter did not envy anyone who was a reporter right now. The person in question who leaked this information has been charged for breaking the NDA agreement, Pepper continued. Several reporters have also been charged with child endangerment for chasing four teenagers down the streets of Queens. Tony squeezed Peter's shoulder before he was stepping forward to the microphone, and Pepper was by his side, taking his hand in hers. "'I want to thank everyone who has helped us in the search for our son,' Tony said. "'It has been a long eleven years, and the tireless efforts of the FBI and Stark Industries has not gone unnoticed. Without them, we wouldn't have Peter here with us today.' Tony paused, and Peter felt the shift in his tone as it became firmer. "'As you can imagine, this has been a very emotional time for our family.' and I ask you to respect the privacy that we are asking for as we move forward. Thank you. The room erupted in an explosion of questions, and Peter winced at the noise level. He squeezed Pepper's hand and leaned in close. Can I say something? Pepper smiled at him. Of course. He stepped forward, Tony whirling in surprise as Peter gently slid into the space at his side. Um, hi? Peter said, wincing as his voice rang out over the room. The questions stopped instantly and he could feel the room leaning towards him in bated breath. Hi, Peter repeated, taking a shaky breath. I... I just wanted to say that I'm really happy that Tony and Pepper found me, even if I didn't know I was missing. Pepper squeezed his hand while Tony took his other. This is all really new to me, and I'm not really sure why you all find it that interesting. There was a small chuckle at his words. I would really appreciate it if you gave me the chance to get to know my parents, and it would be kind of hard if they found out I failed my English test before I had the chance to make up an excuse. Peter grinned at the laughter he got. Um, thank you. Oh, and, uh, could you please not chase me or my friends? Some of us have asthma. Peter stepped away from the microphone and the questions roared back to life. The three of them ignored them, though, and hand in hand they left the room the oak doors closing behind them and blocking them from view once more. "'How was I?' Peter asked, feeling giddy and out of breath. "'You were a natural,' Pepper assured him. "'Good job, kid,' Tony grinned. "'I think this deserves something special.' "'He looks like he's having fun,' Pepper hummed, leaning into Tony's side. "'He sure does.' 
Tony laughed. Both watched as Peter accepted the glass that Dummy was handing him, giving the robot a pat and lighting up as the robot let out a series of happy chirps. They both grinned as Peter took a small sip, shuddering at the taste before putting the glass down and distracting Dummy with an idea. The other Avengers were lingering around, enjoying the large quantities of food that Tony had ordered. They had all been there watching the press conference, and were eager to distract Peter from the constant repeat of it that was being shown on every form of media. I hate to interrupt this moment, Natasha said, appearing from nowhere. She had changed from the pencil skirt and blouse she had worn to the press conference, and into something more comfortable. Then don't, Tony snarked with a smirk, grunting when Pepper smacked him. What's up, Nat? Pepper asked. We need to have a chat soon, Natasha said quietly. I've been doing some digging into Ben, like you asked. Tony looked over to Peter, who was still distracted by Dummy, laughing at the robot that had started chasing Scott around the living room. You find something? Tony asked. Potentially. I'm still chasing up on some leads, but should have some answers soon, Natasha said simply. Bruce has also been going over their notes too. It looks like he's nearly finished deciphering what they mean. Pepper's face hardened. If there's something to find, I want it to disappear before anyone else goes digging into it. While the world may have thought that Peter is adorable, they are still looking for a story here. Natasha nodded. Don't worry, I've been erasing any trace as I go along. Ben's movements throughout the years will be like a ghost. All three of them turned at the loud laughter in the living room. Peter was doubled over as Dummy cooed a series of beeps at Scott, who was face-planted onto the floor, groaning. Clint was smiling smugly, while Wanda giggled helplessly into a couch cushion. Whatever we find, Pepper said, Peter doesn't need to know. The news of Peter Stark returning home had remained the top headline in the country for a week before it finally began to die down. Returning to school had been a weird experience for Peter, not used to the many eyes watching him walk down a hallway with Ned. But his classmates got over it pretty quickly when they saw that Peter was still the same nerd and they left him alone much to his relief. Thanks for the lift, Happy, Peter cried as he climbed out of the car, free from school as the weekend had finally rolled around. He grinned as Happy grumbled a goodbye and bounded over to the lift. Hello, Peter, Friday greeted him as the lift doors closed. Hey, Friday, how are you? Peter asked. I am well, Friday responded, as she always did. No matter how many times the AI told Peter that she didn't have feelings, he continued to treat her like a person. Where would you like to go? Take me to Dad, please, Peter said. Ned's birthday's coming up, and I wanted to ask Dad if he could help me build a lightsaber for him. That sounds like an excellent idea, Friday said. Do you want me to pull up some research for you? Yeah, that would be great, thanks. When the lift came to a stop and the door opened, Peter was momentarily taken aback when he stepped out onto the Avengers floor. He shrugged but ventured out of the lift. The common room was empty, as was the kitchen, so Peter started wandering in search of his dad. He decided to check the lab first and headed in that direction. As he got closer, he grinned when he heard voices and started picking up his pace, only to slow again when he listened to the voices speak. I guess this proves that he knew, Pepper said, her voice sounding angry. Yeah, I would say a letter is pretty damning evidence that Ben knew about Peter, Tony growled. Peter froze in the hallway. They were talking about Ben. Did Ben know? All that time Peter had been living with Ben and May, he had known that Peter wasn't related to them? Peter shook his head. No, Ben wouldn't have done that. He would have never kept Peter away from his parents. Dropping his bag to the floor, Peter kicked off his shoes. He reached into his backpack and slipped his web shooters on before he looked around to make sure no one was watching before he jumped onto the ceiling. He stuck easily and crept along the ceiling until he reached the lab. Where did you even get this? Pepper asked. I found it among the papers Tony brought back from the storage unit, Natasha said. It was part of a will agreement that the Parkers had made. It was to be sent to Ben if they were to pass away. It looks like it wasn't sent through until Peter turned eight due to the investigation surrounding the crash. Peter crawled to the door and peeked over the edge. Tony was pacing angrily, while Pepper, Natasha and Bruce were spread out around a large bench, papers filling every inch of the table. The door was open, and Peter carefully manoeuvred himself through the door. He paused when he got inside and nobody noticed his entrance. With a mental fist bump, he crawled across the ceiling to come hover directly over them, peering down at the papers. "'Who cares where he got it?' Tony snapped. "'He still willingly kept Peter!' Pepper shook her head. "'I don't understand why he would. From the looks of these accounts,' Richard and Mary had already blown through the $20 million Obadiah had given them for taking Peter in the first place. It's not as if he would be getting any money from them, and he never ransomed Peter off. Maybe, Bruce said slowly. He was protecting Peter? Protecting Peter? Tony scoffed. From who? Us? I've been going through Richard and Mary's research, Bruce said. 
pointing at the papers. The biological engineering formulas they were looking into is much more advanced than what some scientists are working on today. How advanced, Tony demanded, stopping his pacing and staring at Bruce. Very, Bruce said gravely. They were looking into merging DNA with another species. The only other person I know who's been working on that is Dr. Farley Stillwell. Peter frowned, recognising the name. He was one of the scientists who they were introduced to when they had their field trip to Oscorp. He had said that he was a biological engineer and that he was currently researching spider DNA. Then he had led them into a room that held nearly every species of spider. He failed to mention the radioactive spider that bit Peter. What aren't you telling us, Bruce? Pepper frowned. Bruce sighed. Judging by the notes that are here, he hesitated, looking between Tony and Pepper before he heaved another sigh. It looks like they did some experiments on Peter. What? Pepper and Tony exploded. Peter's jaw dropped. His fake parents had experimented on him? He racked his brain for any memory of him being experimented on, but it was coming up blank. Surely he would have noticed if he'd been experimented on, right? The worst they did was give him asthma, Bruce said quickly. Not that it excuses anything they did. You're damn right it doesn't, Tony spat, slamming his hand down on the bench. It could explain why Ben didn't say anything, Bruce said. Maybe he found out, just like we did, that Peter had been experimented on and wanted to keep him safe. That did sound like Ben. He had always protected Peter, but there was a flaw in Bruce's logic. The only thing that Peter had was bad asthma, and there were plenty of people in the world who also had it. It didn't exactly warrant Ben keeping him from his parents. Ben couldn't have known Peter was kidnapped. The migraines and sensory overloads, Pepper said. Could that be due to the experiments? Could be, but Peter said they didn't start until after Ben died, Bruce said. He kept them from May, Natasha pointed out. He could have easily hid the episodes from them. A six-year-old with a raging migraine is not going to be able to keep that quiet, Bruce shook his head. I mean, it's possible that it could be a delayed effect, but I would need Peter's blood to really look into what they did to him. Ben wasn't a scientist, Tony said, flicking at the papers. He would have had to have someone translate this for him. May's a nurse, Natasha said. Perhaps this is something she could have translated. Pepper bit her lip. She's been so adamant that she didn't know anything about this. Natasha shrugged. People lie. Anger flared up inside of Peter. In an instant, he stuck a web to the roof and propelled down, so he's eye level with Natasha, glaring at her furiously. Natasha jumped back, hand going to her belt, and settled on the dagger's handle that stuck out. May didn't know. She would never do that to me, he yelled. You don't know what you're talking about. The room rang with silence, and Peter watched as Natasha's eyes slowly drifted upwards, looking to the single web that Peter was hanging from. Shit. Hey there, guys, girls, and non-binary pals. I hope you're having a lovely day today. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. I'm sorry. I'm not dead, I promise. <laughs> I know I've been gone for a while, um, which, you know, wasn't fun. Um, and I have been, like, seeing all your comments and I just want to say thank you for everyone who has been very kind and has expressed their concern. Um, I am alive. I didn't die. Quite. <laughs> just about. Um, basically, I've just been having a lot of medical issues for the past couple of months. I've basically been living in and out of hospital, which, not fun. Um, yeah. I was hospitalised a few times because I was throwing up blood, which isn't isn't fun, um, but I seem to be doing slightly better. I mean, I haven't been hospitalised in a little bit, so that's nice. Um, and I've just been excited to make some content. I mean, I, I really missed recording and it was really sad not being able to do it and not being able to be around and online as much because I was just felt like I was dying every day. <laughs> but here we go. Um, I'm hoping to be able to make a lot more content and record and record and record because I've missed it and I know that you guys have wanted the next chapter in this story so I hope you enjoyed it. Did you like it? I had a good time. I mean this, this, this chapter is a bit of a whopper. I mean we've got Peter calling Tony dad for the first time which I think is really cute. Um, you know, dealing with this whole aftermath of, like, them finding out about sensory overloads and them all being like, why didn't you tell us? 
I Love Protective Parents, the press conference, pretty iconic, and confirmation that Peter, uh, well, Ben knew about Peter being kidnapped, which is pretty big news. Um, and also Peter's exposed that he's got powers. What a cliffhanger. I'll try not to keep you holding on to it too long. Uh, this is one that I, I feel like I genuinely couldn't leave you guys on this chapter for so long. So I'm hopefully going to try and record the next chapter soon. Um, let me know if there's other stuff you want me to do. I um, want to get back into it. If you have any like one shots you want me to like try and do, that would be nice. I want to kind of like get back into the groove. Sorry if this chapter wasn't great. I don't know. I've been... I was trying to get back into what it feels like to do it, but I feel like I'm really out of practice, which is also making me ramble a lot now. So <laughs> I'm going to try and stop and not have this be an eternally long outro. Um, but I hope all you guys are doing well. Please let me know in the comments how have you been, what you've been up to, any changes in your life. It's a new year. How was your holidays? Everything. Please. I just, I really miss you guys. Um, you can also like the video if you liked it to boost my serotonin levels um, and subscribe. Um, <laughs> now it will probably mean something. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for not being around. I feel really bad. And like, I know I shouldn't because like, what was I going to do? Like bring my mic to hospital? Probably, probably not. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy to be back. And um, please all of you guys please take care of yourself uh there's one thing i've learned from being so ill it's like if you don't take the time for yourself if you don't look after yourself you will get very very ill so please <laughs> look after yourself drink your water i live off it now so all i do is drink like 15 cups of water a day uh please do it it's really important for your health please get some sleep rest is so important and if you've got medication remember to take it every day don't skimp out um, and go just do something good for you. Do some self-care today, please. It's important because, yes, this is a threat. And I will catch you guys later.